Hello everybody, this is TU Vish one and I am back again, guys. I'm so excited to be here again. Uh, this is my third podcast, as you know, if you listen to my other podcasts. They are uncut, unscented, and uncannily brilliant. So, this is the third one. Let's get into it, guys. Let's start off immediately. If you look at the background there, it's YouTube. And YouTube quite special to me, you know. Um, over the years, a lot of stuff has happened. Like, um just the way the, the landscape of YouTube has changed over the past time and I'm gonna sorta of mark this by talking about some of the YouTube channels in the top ten, the top most subscribed so um, I just wanna point out that basically like years ago it was different to get to be subscribed there was like little known YouTubers and it was all a small community and now it's like the big damn people from f on YouTube and there's the other people from mainstream uh, success who've come to YouTube for such success and just to add on to their fans and, and reach their fans from different locations so it's definitely different to get to fame nowadays than it would be, it would be in the past so let's get into the top 10 right now uh, so number one is music 88 million uh, 42,445 subscribers so it's actually a real channel well it is but it's it's one of those channels that's not it's it's it showcases music so it wouldn't be counted as some, a one person show. Number two is gaming. Got seventy eight million five hundred and fifty two thousand and thirty six subscribers. So again this one doesn't really count as sort of a proper YouTube channel. Sports is number three at seventy seven million two hundred and nineteen thousand seven hundred two uh subscribers, which is sorta of what you see at the sidebar on your YouTube page. It's the same thing as that. Each of news comes in at number four with a lot less of thirty million nine hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred sixty five subscribers and number five is PewDiePie with thirty two million nine hundred thirty four thousand and seven hundred sixty and so PewDiePie Let's talk about PewDiePie he's pretty beastly gaining subscribers over the last two years or one year um, from seven million last year I think to now gaining a lot more twenty five million fans. Yeah, so PewDiePie, you, you, you either love him or hate him. There you go, PewDiePie. Number 6 is popular on YouTube with 28,973,135 subscribers. And number 7 is YouTube Spotlight, 22,517,836. Uh, Olaf Soy German is 20,449,913. And number 9 is Smosh with 19,430,000. 276 and number 10 is movies 18 million so yeah there's like vivo ones after that as well so you get a sort of an idea of the sort of youtubers you're getting on the on this list and um it brings me over to the subject of how everything's changed because these people would have had it big only in the last two years and are gonna probably dominate the scene especially pewdiepie who's gaining very rapidly at the moment um so I guess this stuff is is quite analytic and I think if you check it out yourself you'll see how it changes and I think over the next year it's PewDiePie is definitely dominating this year and might be for the remainder of next year. For the start of next year, the first six months. Could be his PewDiePie's year was this year. Okay. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that I like to look at as it is a nice YouTube background there and so why don't we just get into it straight away and start to look at some of my fave YouTubers uh, so I take a look at my subscription box yeah no okay um, so one of them I'm gonna talk about is IO Productions, IO Uncut, all those channels it's all the IO team so it's just based in Canada and it's very official team of people headed by Landon who do a lot of just news um, Landon does his own channel with vlogs and stuff like that and his own news but everyone else is sort of taking part and giving you daily uh, updates on whatever is going on different channels for different types of subjects and it's all very quick very brief and very intricately done um, it works really well and they also do a bit of special on things like award nights where they do like say 12 videos in one night or something like that 20 videos so it's pretty amazing how intense how much they get done okay um, another channel I want to talk about is 
good mythical morning uh, right link so they do a lot of good stuff there such as um, just lots of morning do talk shows the good mythical morning show which they do every single day with, along with good mythical more every weekday and they just do nice subjects and like the commentations between the two they go over help people uh, with and they do little animations there's music videos which they love to do sort of stuff like taste tests um giving people advice stuff like you know they have a team of people in the background there which are pretty informative and stuff and so you learn and you ed you're educated and you're also in uh entertained so I, th I really like that and they're on the rise now so they've got like five million subscribers or four million four four and a half million another one i like to point out is watch mojo i think a lot of you've heard of this it's a very big company in canada and they do just I'm pretty sure they reach 10 million subscribers. No? Anyway, they do top 10s on almost any subject you can think of. Almost anything. And I mean that. Go on to Watch Your Joe, look it up. Um, there will be always be something for you. They upload every single day. From video games, to food, to superheroes, to music. Everything and everything in between. So, if you're interested in any of those subjects, there is a lot on each of those. So... I would definitely recommend them um, for one of your watches. Another is Trilby Reviews and Mr. Tardis Reviews. This is Matt, a guy who is in his early 20s and he's made a series. Well, he's made a TV show pilot, which he hopes to get put, done by, which is called... Um, I'm not really sure what it's called, but... Meat Space, that's it. But he does lots of reviews on different movies. At the moment, on his Trilby channel, over his Marissa Tardis Reviews, he does his Dr. Who... <laughs> So, if you're a big fan of Doctor Who or anything like that, you would sure to be entertained by what he does on the net. So, yeah, I actually would recommend him quite a lot. He does uh, unboxings and just everything. And he's also a good little channel called Trivia Gaming, where he does Pokemon, walkthroughs, and, you know, everything like that. Another one is League of Super Critics, um, mainly Nostalgia Critic, Nostalgia Chick, Cinema Snob, um, Todd's Pop Song Reviews, uh, Fifty Shades Green, and Doug. Doug does lots of reviews in his different personas, and he's really, really entertaining, wacky, and joyful to show, hear his knowledge on every subject he can. So, pretty wonderful from that side of things. You can also check up loads of videos he's done. He's got only 8 for ages, and he's made lots of long videos on movies, uh, look-ats, and just everything that you would probably want to see from a YouTuber. Now, I'm trying to talk about Bandgeek 84008. 8408. Um, I checked him out like in the last year or so, and he's done stuff like books and review reviews, which are very entertaining. His best thing on his channel, in my opinion. Um, so, very successful thing there. I think he's one of the lesser known YouTubers, YouTubers, but he is very intellectual in the way that he presents things. He goes into depth on every sort of thing that a books versus movies would, would present itself as, and he's definitely influential on my opinion on books and movies. The next one is Jeremy Jeans. It's awesome too. This guy is one of the best reviewers out there. He reviews every day, he does a lot of short cuts, which are quite um, well known for his style. And it's very, very entertaining just to hear him shout out just very fast way ways of talking about these movies. And he gets at all the points, and he gets at all his annoyances, and he tells you whether you should, it's awesome tactic or not, and just different ways of saying about the about it. This one, next one is for wrestling and sports in general. It's called Tom Cushney. He's got featured quite a lot and he's this British guy who does long reviews on Raws and stuff like that and it's very entertaining. He hears opinions, he's quite fair in what he says and he makes other videos as well, unboxings which he gets regularly. He gets lots of DVDs and he does lots of stuff that are quite really entertaining. And as well as that I just like the way he reviews. I think it's quite well good. Okay, so the next one is Vsauce channels in general. Vsauce 1, Vsauce 2, Vsauce 3. Very, very good. Vsauce especially. Vsauce 
2 is pretty... I like to watch and Vsauce 3 I don't watch as much, but I still think all three channels are amazing. Um, Vsauce only uploads a few videos, one video every like two weeks, but Vsauce 2 is quite an, a regular uploader, so I like to watch Vsauce 2 quite a lot. And he does lots of informative educational videos on anything you can imagine. And what you should buy is what Vsauce 2 likes to, to focus on. So it's very, very good on that aspect. The next one I'm going to talk about is the game theorist or game theory. You probably know this guy from Fine Rose, which is another channel I like. Um, but he does theories on every sort of thing, every aspect. He goes into the scientific aspects of video games. If you're anyway interested in video games, you're going to like some of his videos. Um, he likes to talk about Mario. Watchdogs, anything really that involves games that he would be you would be interested in. So wonderful on his behalf. Um, let's just round up and talk about a few major channels that I like. I got like Who Addicts Reviews. Go check that out. And the Network Channel Awesome Head Squeeze. Uh, Anatomy of a Movie, or Popcorn Talk, WWE Channel. Alternate History Hub, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, Chris Stuckman, Rooster Teeth, Good Mike Work, Matthew Santoro, or is it Channels? You know, there's a lot of people out there that I would think are pretty great YouTubers. Aim Clean, BF vs. GF, Big Puma Gaming, Casey Levere, Charlie is a Cool Like, Cinema Sins, CDFXC, Downfield Games. That is not fire facts. Um, what else am I gonna say? Jack's film way past my bedtime. Nathan Wells, Nerd Cubed, OTRS Central, Schmoes No, The One O One, The Fine Bros. And Rod Brad, a lot of walkthrough gamers, Welshie, Onidar, World of KP, yeah, so there's a lot to look at. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be subscribed to all these people, and they do are quite intellectual. Most, of them, Some of them are even more, and I'm going to leave down major ones in the description, so you can check them out, and hopefully you'll learn something from any of these things that you see below. So, thank you guys, that's been it for the YouTube side of things. Now let's move on and talk about what shall I talk about? How about um let's see see I don't really prepare too well for these things. But um let's talk about Netflix and the shows that I like to see. So Netflix is pretty good and I like to watch it, yeah. Yeah, I like to watch it a lot. Um if there's stuff that I like to see it's possibly the next of the following shows that I mentioned are ones that I like to see, and if you agree on any one of them, I'd like to hear your opinion. So you can leave it in the comments below what you think. What do you think of any of these shows? Netflix, if you already know, is a video thing where you can watch TV shows, television, movies. And documentaries, and it's very informative in the documentary section, and they do choose a lot of good stuff, especially the American version, which I really enjoy. Uh, piracy, maybe. So, let's just look at my picks. Have I made a list? No, I haven't made a list. But um, I'm just going to go through some of the shows I like to watch, and I'll just talk about each one, and see what I think. So these are the ones that I recently watched and stuff that I'm ongoing watching. So, let's go back to the very start. Red Dwarf is a sci-fi show, which you all know I've talked about on my channel, and they do have it on this American version, which is very good. Uh, I really like it. Undeclared is another good one with Seth Rogen and James Franco. Um, I think I started watching this, and it was very uh, goofy and awkward humour, and I really like that. So, it basically follows around these people as they go to college, this main guy and his ex escapades in college, college life as he starts off, and it's kind of awkward with his other friend there, who doesn't go to college. 
Uh, okay, next one is The Walking Dead, which is on Netflix, on the American version, which is really good. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. I'm a big fan of this show. I'm probably going to do reviews in the future on this one because it's just that good. And it follows around the guy who's in the oh, zombie apocalypse. It's on its fifth season, right, fifth season right now. And it's done pretty well for itself. A lot of cool characters introduced and how people fight over what's right and what's wrong. Next one is How My Mother. It's a comedy. It just finished up uh, this year or last year. I think it was last year. Yeah, it was this year. Uh, How I Met Your Mother. It had eight, nine seasons. A very successful comedy show about these five guys who all fight two girls, three guys, and they all sort of have been around each other for a while and they go to bars and stuff and talk about life and how their daily life is going and, and we see everything develop between the guys and all the ex escapades they do as well. I know I said that a few times. But they have all, all nine seasons on it and it's really good to see them have all these episodes. Um, Lost is another one. I just started off. I'm on the third episode of season one and it's pretty entertaining so far. Um, I can't really tell you too much. I know that you've probably all seen this before or heard of it. It's it's ended ages ago and I know my brother watched it and so I was pretty entertaining interest in seeing it and it's so far it's hold, held up pretty well I like a lot of the characters in the show and there's just a whole wealth of, of characters they can see in the show so if you don't like one person you're gonna like a few others or if you don't like a few of them you're gonna like at least one person on the show because there's just so many to choose from quite like the walking dead in that sense um, another one is Futurama which is just started watching I've seen this ages ago and it's only just got back into it it's pretty amazing so funny, um, I'd say probably go as good as Simpsons or even better. Um, I think it's quite underrated as a show, and it just ended like last year or the year before. And so I would definitely recommend this one, as in most people's lists. And everyone's probably seen the show. It's it's just really really good. It's in the set in the future, as you can hear in the title, about these guys who deliver pizzas. Um, Fry, who is found his uncle in the future, his great nephew, sorry, um, and his other host of characters who are all oddballs, and it's very, very entertaining as they fight uh, all the aliens, and we see so much sci-fi involved. And this one is Freaks and Geeks. You probably know this one. It's a one series show with Seth Rogen, James Franco, and Jason Segel from How I Met So it's all sort of connected. This is how they sort of started off on their fame. These three people and a few others. So, um, hilarious. I think it's really funny. It's kind of awkward. All the characters are very, very well played. Some of the best acted characters I've ever seen. Um, but it's a pity it only lasted one season. You could probably get finished in a few days. It's only 18 episodes, but they're around 45 minutes each. So, one of my favourites to watch. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I watched it ages ago. It's really good. There's like four seasons of it or something. And it's just a classic sci-fi vampire show with the keen elements all mixed into it. And it's really wonderful. And let's move on. So Torchwood is another one. It's connected to Doctor Who, which you all like to watch. Two sci-fi shows that I talk about. Uh, Torchwood is a bit more adult. But it's still as good as Doctor Who. It feels like different in a way, but it's got Cat and Jack Harkness and a other group, along with Gwen, who joins up with Torchwood, and how they sort of have to find aliens in Cardiff, because that's a hot spot for aliens. So now I'm going to talk about some movies that I like. Go through the Metropolis Restored. Yeah, I just saw that one. It was pretty good. I watched a bit of it. Submarine, Cap Dakota, Pulp Fiction, Sleeper. Truman Show and Skyfall and then another documentary called Tiny Story About Living Small which I haven't finished yet but a lot of good shows there and I'm just going to show you that there is a lot of good shows in this there's also like Breaking Bad a lot of new movies out I'm sure you're going to like something on this and it's very very entertaining okay so that's it from that side of things on Netflix um, hope you enjoy that Oh, now guys, so that's it for my Netflix or 
recommendations. There's also a lot of Christmas movies out right now. And yeah, everything is pretty good. Pretty, pretty uh, good. So, as I mentioned earlier, I was talking about the YouTube sort of side of things. Now I'm going to move on to world news. I usually do the segment. I'm going to do a bigger segment right now. So, let's talk about the world news. W woman held over eight child deaths in Australia. A woman has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the deaths of eight children in an Australian home. Queensland Police Detective Inspector Bruno Ans Asnick. God said that the 37-year-old woman was currently under guard at a hospital in the northern city of Cairns. She is the mother of seven of the children found dead in the house. The eighth child was her niece. Police had said now how the children died, but Mr. Anas Asknar said they are examining several knives in the house that they may have seen the weapon used to kill the children. The woman was also found in the house, home with the children, suffering from stab wounds to the chest. Mr. Anaskar said she is lucid and talking to police. Mr. Asknar said the children ranged in age from ranged in age from 18 months to 14 years. Pretty awful to hear. To hear. So, I don't really know much about that story. The only first I've heard it is right now. Let's go on top of something else. Japan hit by 5.9 earthquake. A uh, 5.9 magnitude earthquake has hit Japan's Honshu Island, shaking from Fukushima, where it crippled nuclear power plants are located. Local media said that there was no tsunami warning, a spokesman for Tokyo Electrical Power, who owns the nuclear plant, said. No irregularities have been found at its Fukushima plant. So, we've all heard about the other sort of earthquakes that have hit uh, Japan in the past, and this one doesn't seem to be very major. But, you've got to be on the warning, because this one is something that you could you have to look out for and it only just got uploaded so they don't know too much about this but it's good to keep aware of this sort of stuff and it's good that they've well they've we can record it and, and research this stuff so the next one is russia dismisses sanctions and reaffirms its right to crimea russia has dismissed new us us sanctions as new us sanctions as useless and underscored its historic right to the crimean peninsula Following several rounds of sanctions earlier this year, President Barack Obama on Friday approved new restrictions on Crimea, which Russia annexed in front March after a hastily called referendum. The Russian Foreign Ministry said today that the new sanctions won't push Russia to give up Crimea, since it is a historic and integral part of Russia. The ministry referred to Cuba, where it took the U.S. a half a century to, re to restore diplomatic relations, and said it was prepared to wait as long as necessary for Washington to relent. Obama's orders today prohibited U.S. companies and individuals from exporting or importing any goods, services, or technology to or from Crimea. Israel bombs Gaza terrorist site. Israel's military has hit a Hamas site in the Gaza Strip in its first airstrike on the Palestinian territory since the summer's war. The military said that the strike on was called a Hamas terror infrastructure site site in the southern Gaza Strip was in response to a rocket fire from Gaza into southern Israel yesterday. The rocket fire caused no injuries. Palestinian res residents reported hearing two explosions in Khaz Yunus region of Gaza in an area that contains training sites from Palestinian militants. No injuries were immediately reported. Israel's army spokesman, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner said Israel's military will not permit any attempt to undermine the security and jeopardize the well-being of the civilians of Israel. The Hamas terrorist organization is responsible and unaccountable for today's attack against Israel. The Gaza rocket attack and Israeli retaliation comes days after a European Union court ordered Hamas removed from the U.S. terrorist list for procedural reasons, but said the bloc could maintain assets freezes against Hamas members. For now, so yeah, that's the certain news in Israel for today. Same as feared Batman massacre over the interview threats. Um, let's oh, load up. Load, please load, reload. So breaking news, everybody. We got that breaking, breaking news. Pretty intense.
Now we're going to talk about how the interview was blocked from cinemas all across America. I think they all decided the interview of this new movie about North, sort of in featuring North Korea, how Seth Rogen and David Franco are now targeting North Korea um, for they are sent out to kill the leader Kim Jong Un, who is the actual leader in real life. I think it's kind of insensitive towards North Korea. A lot of people think that North Korea are being way too difficult, which is true. And they're going, thinking that they're being terrorist dragged by the, the the movie by America, which is made in. So Sony being hacked by North Korea, and the movie was remo- now removed from theaters. There's also news stories coming out about what were the reasons for this. And how everybody just backed out, and now it's moved. I think this movie didn't do too well in terms of critical reviews. Maybe um, I've checked one source; it said one hundred percent. Another source said fifty percent. Sort of in between those. So the interview, which came out, this new movie that's now being all debated on what's going on, subject matter involved, and now a new other movie. With Steve Carell, which was planned for production, called Pyongyang, is completely scrapped. Steve Carell uh, t- tweeted about this and said that he was very disappointed um, and bummed that he couldn't do this. So we're not really sure on what his opinion is. He might get an interview with him or whatever. So yeah, that's sort of world news that I'm talking about at the moment. Any other news out there? When a group claiming <coughs> credit for the hacking of Sony Pictures and Tra- with threatened violence against cinemas showing the interview earlier this week the fate of the movie's space screen life was all but sealed even though police did not deem the threats credible over to all the time owners in sony undoubtedly considered the 2012 massacre of dozens of people in cinema in aurora colorado the attackers came without warning and at the time there was no president for such mass violence against the u.s movie audience the cinema owner contends it could not have foreseen the bloodshed but it still faces 20 lawsuits over the mass shootings and survivors and victims' families asserting should have been done to protect those who went to see a midnight showing about and film The Dark Knight Rises. Experts say the defence used by Cinemark Holdings could not use it if violence broke out at showing of the interview. It wasn't worth the risk, says Eric Wold, a film exhibitor analysis with B. Riley & Co. Despite the legal liability, at least one notable lawyer disagrees with the decision to cancel the interview. U.S. President Barack Obama said it was a mistake for Sony to scrap the film, and he wished executives had consulted him first. We cannot have a society in which some dictatorship, some place, can start imposing censorship, he said. Some Hollywood notables, including Rob Lowe, Steve Carell, and, and director Michael Moore, have also criticized Sony's decision. Different Diplomatic and creative consi- considerations aside, scrapping the interview was not a huge financial consideration for the cinema owners, who would ultimately be responsible for any lawsuits over violence. So, pretty wonderful how people all just blocked out. Not wonderful, but anyway. Um, yeah. My opinion on this whole thing is that it was probably the right decision on the cinema executives' um, whole own ideas, and I guess any cinema would have its own opinion on this, and they all sort of seem to follow each other on the same sort of overall decision. It would be weird if it was in one cinema, and maybe in a whole bunch, not in a whole bunch of others. So I think it was probably the right decision, I guess, if they felt it was unsafe and unclear whether everyone agreed on this, but... A lot of people disagree, and I'm just going to say, put it to rest, guys. Just move on from this, and I think if it doesn't need to be in the cinemas, it can be online or whatever. 
Uh, so yeah, Obama criticizes uh, Sony for that film choice, but we're gonna have to get past this. Next, Pakistan kills 77 militants and hang two more after Peshawar school massacre. Authorities in Pakistan have hanged two convicted militants. In the first executions following the reinstatement of the death penalty in the wake of the, this week's Peshawar school massacre. Two officials in Pakistan state television said the executions were act carried out on the central city of Faisalabad. There was no official confirmation of the executions. Following the school massacre on Tuesday by Taliban militants, we saw 148 people killed. The two government resist reinstated the death penalty on Wednesday. Pakistani jets and ground forces earlier killed at least 77 militants in the northwestern tribal region near the Afghan border. A Pakistani pr prosecutor also said the government will try to cancel the bail granted by the main suspect in the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks, a decision that outraged neighbouring India and called into quantity question Pakistan's commitment to fighting mis militancy. Uh, the violence at a school in Pakistan's northwest area this week stunned the country and brought cries for retribution. In the wake of the mass killing, the military struck targets in the Kerr tribal region and approved the death penalty for six convicted terrorists. The military said a ground force killed 10 militants on Thursday night while airstrikes killed another 17, including an Uzbek commander. Another 32 alleged terrorists were killed by security forces in an ambush in Tira Valley in Khyber on Friday as they headed towards the Afghan border, the military said. On Friday morning, troops killed 18 more militants during a cordon and search operation in Khyber, the, the military said. The military said that Army Chief General Rahif Sharif was travelling to Khyber to meet troops taking part in the ground operation. Yeah, so pretty major... Um, stuff happening over there in Pakistan. Um, I know Malala Yousaf is sort of talking about this as she gets her awards. She's from there, that part, and I think she has kind of to do with this as well. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this one. I know it's a really short podcast, but I'm kind of in a rush to do stuff today. And I may have another one up longer soon. Thank you guys for watching this Between TV Vision one. And I hope you enjoy this podcast edition for Christmas time. So don't forget to subscribe, favorite, like this video, and comment below, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys later. Uh